ahead and get started. Um, so it's a very sad day for all of us because this is the last transition. Um, this is module six, which is understanding academic planning. And by the end of today's session, um, we will have covered all 10 functional areas that we've identified for enrollment. Um, as many of you have probably noticed as we've moved through the material from setup through course offering to registration and then the program and academic record and now academic planning, uh, topics have gotten a little squishier and um, a little <laughs> less well defined. Um, I think this is going to be especially true for today. Today is a bit of an anomaly in that um, we have not a whole lot in the way of academic planning that we're planning on delivering anyone, and I'll talk about that more later as we move through the presentation. But what's nice is that we do have a planned contribution in this area, which is UW's My Plan. And so we're going to spend the first part of today's presentation talking about um, academic planning and how it's envisioned for KS, and then some scoping decisions that were made in light of E1, and then how that relates to you got my plan contribution, and then I'm going to hand it over to Jill Yetman, who's the delivery team lead for UW My Plan, and she's going to give us a status update of my plan and a demo of where they are currently. So this is a little bit different <laughs> than some of the other um, sessions that we've had, so I encourage you to ask questions. I, I don't think we'll go anywhere near the four-hour time period that we have allotted. It'll probably be closer to one and a half hours. Um, so I encourage you to ask questions as we go. Um, so with that, let's, we'll get started here. Um, so the first, we've, we've kind of chunked this out into, into three main topics. Um, the first is um, what I'm calling from, from vision to reality, and that's really define, defining academic planning. When we first started doing requirements gathering, uh, for KS enrollment, there was a lot of visionary thinking and a lot of very blue sky thinking about um, what academic planning might look like. Um, a lot of you might have heard the term concierge, you know, a lot of that functionality. And as we got further into both curriculum management and understanding what enrollment looks like, we we had to be more um, clear and crisp about our thinking about what exactly is academic planning. So there was first some. Um, uh, reality setting with respect to what we wanted academic planning to be within KS enrollment. And then there was a second stage of sort of reality hitting us in the face, which is when we got to enrollment one and some decisions we made about what enrollment one was going to be. So that's from vision to reality part two. And then the third part will be, well, now let's go from the reality of where we are in one closer towards the vision and take a look at what my plan um, might do for us. Um, as a consortium. And again, that will be led by Jill Yetman. As always, all the information on the training sessions can be found on the wiki. <laughs> so the slides should be painfully familiar to most of you at this point. Again, just to reiterate, the point of these um, trainings is to help you understand where the materials are and where our thinking is around functional concepts to date and enrollment. Um, and again, so here, for the day session, we're, we're focused on academic planning for enrollment. Um, and then we really, unlike some of the other areas, we really can't talk about academic planning without talking about some scoping decisions that we've made in E1. So we'll talk about that and then, again, lead to, to my plan. So again, this is a slide that most of you um, have seen. Well, you've seen it at least six times um, now, probably more often. But again, what we're focused on here is the, the boxes in red, which are, which are academic planning. So if you kind of think about it on the program circle, we're really thinking about planning students do to get into programs, and then once they've enrolled in programs, planning they do to complete their programs. And this is where we intersect with UW My Plan. So just a level set about where we are in the 10 functional areas. OK, so first let's talk about academic planning and what our original thinking was. Uh, several years ago at this point and how it's evolved as our thinking about and our understanding of enrollment has evolved. So what is academic planning? <clears throat> Very broadly, it's a continuum of functionality that helps students navigate their academic experience. And so, again, I, we call that a continuum because we can think about things um, very, in the very short term and the very tactical, meaning, you know, what courses I should, should take, you know, what specific things do I need to do next quarter. 
Um, but it can go all the way to the long term and the more strategic, where we're really focused on the student's interest and, and academic and personal goals. So we can think of it as a continuum. Um, academic planning for is, is primarily for admitted students. Um, again, in sort of descending order of um, relevance, it's probably most relevant for uh, uh, undergraduates and uh, undecided undergraduates. But it's certainly something that graduate students and professional students would want to take advantage of as well. Uh, even though it's targeted primarily admitted students, there's also a component for non-admitted students, so prospects and applicant and transfer students who might want to take a look at how they can bring in either their interest or their prior learning to an institution and apply that to get to the, where they want to be. Um, and then there's an advisor component um, of academic planning, obviously, to help the students uh, in, in their planning process. So those are kind of the, the, the primary target audiences. So when we first thought in KS, when we first thought on the quality student side about academic planning, um, we really were thinking about it pretty broadly. Um, and we're thinking about it in terms of tools to help plan out both the life and learning experience of a student while they're at the institution and beyond. So th these are things like articulating both their academic and their personal goals and interests, um, identifying learning to help them meet those goals and interests or that match those goals and, goals and interests defining a roadmap of these learning activities um, to help them get there, and then you know, obviously marking their progress, auditing, and doing requisite checking on those learning activities. So it's really sort of high-level conceptual thinking about students to be able to say, you know, here's what I'm interested in, here's the types of things I want to do. Um, we would have a variety of all these learning units or learning activities that students could um, participate in to help them get closer. And this whole collection of, of information and and functionality was loosely envisioned in a learning plan that you know students could document what, what they wanted to do. They could then share that with their advisor. Um, in some cases, those plans could be approved as a learning contract. Um, students could share their plans with each other. Um, and then some learning plans could be made available as a sample or template to students for, for planning purposes. So this was kind of the early thinking. And it was, it was pretty broad. And, um, and as we started moving into think, moving through curriculum management and seeing how learning units were actually being delivered, we started looking at enrollment and thinking about specifically how we were going to deal with enrollment and registration. We started to get a little bit um, less high in the sky um, and a little bit more practical about the kinds of things that students really need in academic planning. So <clears throat> this slide is meant to represent sort of our evolution of thinking from the from the very broad um, and ideal, I mean, these aren't things that, it's not that we don't want to eventually do these things, but in the walk before you can run sort of theme of things, instead of focusing on broad goals and interests, um, instead of you know having students say, I want to work with people, we're really moving towards saying, um, instead of academic goals and interests, really being specific about programs that students might be interested in. So, Instead of saying, oh, I want to work with people, now we're trying to, we're really focused on, well, I want to major in social work, and what does that look like? In terms of personal goals and interests, you know, early thinking was students might be able to document things like, I want to learn the violin, or I want to, um, I want to gain some leadership experience. Um, we really don't have an analog for that right now in our thinking. Again, these might be long-term goals, but in the short-term goal of academic planning, we, um, we're not really going to deal with those more personal goals. Learning activities, um, originally we envisioned that these would be a variety of things, courses, programs, experiential learning projects, co-curricular activities. But um, given that in curriculum management, we delivered courses and programs, and that's likely how we're going to continue in enrollment, at least for the short term. You know, we really focus learning activities to be things, courses, and programs. Um, again, if we're trying to map out these learning activities, we're really talking about a roadmap of, of coursework primarily. And this is what we're calling our learning plan. And I'll talk more specifically about what that looks like. Um, audits and requisite checking, you know, that functionality broadly you know, hasn't been scoped down. It's just the things that you can audit and check are, are most likely just coursework. So we moved from sort of very esoteric ideas to a little bit more concrete and practical notions around academic planning. So as we move from the, from the vision of academic planning to more the reality, we're really becoming centered on programs. 
recognizing that the bulk of our students enroll in our institutions to pursue particular programs. So academic planning more on the concept of programs, we can think about it in terms of program exploration. That is, help students identify what programs they might be interested in. And here we're really talking about matching um, interests based on coursework, or what we call what-if audits. And we'll look at some specific use cases for that. Um, after program exploration, once students maybe have identified programs of interest, then you really move into the program preparation and enrollment phase. That is, I've identified some things that I'm interested in. What do I need to do to get into those programs? So certainly you would have a view of the academic record. And now you might want to audit coursework against entrance requirements. Again, these are still what, what if audits because the student isn't actually enrolled in the program. Once the student's been admitted to a program and is working on their coursework, the question that comes up is, well, what do I need to do to finish? And this is very <laughs> obviously called program completion. Oops, did we just lose my screen? No. Nope. We're not a full screen, sorry. Um, and so now we're really talking about auditing a coursework against program completion requirements. And this is what is often referred to as what is audit, because you're, you're auditing a student's academic record against their, their program um, in which they're enrolled. And then so learning plan in this context really helps define how and when a student does all these things. So a learning plan in this context is a multi-year schedule of coursework, primarily coursework, um, that really aids the student regardless of the program stage that they're in. So whether they're in the program exploration phase, the program preparation and enrollment phase, or program completion phase, a learning plan should help them at every stage. Um, it'll contain their actual coursework as they take more and more courses and become more and more mature students. And it'll also take, contain their planned coursework and the things that they plan to take in order to either get into a program or, or complete a program. Um, the thinking is it can be created, created from scratch, uh, meaning from blank, that they can just create one from blank, or from a sample learning plan. And it's something that should be able to be shared with other students or advisors. So, and please interrupt me at any point if, there, if there's any questions. <laughs> and Bobby, too, if there's anything you want to help clarify, please, please do jump in. So when we talk about program exploration, you know, here's some of the focus user stories. And the first one's grayed out because this, this starts to get at um, more sophisticated matching of program exploration. Instead of matching coursework, you're really talking about interest. And so this is a user story that's a little bit on the edge. But you know, as a student, I might want to identify one or more programs that align with my interest, ability, and career goals. You know, having those data available be able to do those type of matches is something that we don't envision having in, in enrollment anytime soon. Um, but then we move into the more concrete stuff. So as a student, I want to see how what I've done matches the requirements of, program, of programs I'm interested in to ensure I'm on track. So again, this would be a what-if audit of a student who's not currently enrolled in a program, but they would like to evaluate their coursework against the requirements of a program that they're interested in to see you know, what would it take for me to get in? What would it take for me to finish? Um, if a student has a learning plan where they've mapped out some of their planned coursework, they should be able to audit their planned coursework against the requirements of the program. Um, and that's the third user story. Uh, another case in program exploration is they, a student might want to identify courses that satisfy gen ed requirements early in their career at the institution. Um, so they don't have to waste their time. Maybe they can knock out their gen ads before they really know what they want to major in. Um, as, and then as some, a student prior to being in a major, they might want to see the commonality across a variety of programs to determine which classes they should take. So for instance, if they're interested in three different majors and they can look at the commonality of required courses across those three different majors, those might be good ones to take so that they don't um, close off any of their options. So these are all user stories that are in the realm of program exploration. And it's all about using academic planning tools to help identify um, programs in, um, of interest. So any questions about what we mean when we talk about program exploration? 
All right, so program exploration is really about identifying target programs a student might be interested in. And then once they've identified one or more targets, students will want to prepare to enroll in those targets. So this is not shockingly what we call program preparation and enrollment. So it's things like, as a pre-major, I want to identify what I need to do to be admitted to my program or programs of choice. And here, what I need to do is, is where there's some um, where there could be some feature creep. Initially, you know, we're thinking it'll certainly be coursework. What courses do I need to take to be admitted to a program? But, you know, as we all know, a lot of programs have non-course requirements for admittance. There could be applications, you know, portfolios, letters of recommendation, et cetera. So those are great out here because, again, those are things that, if they're not stored in the system, it would be hard to, um, to identify. But certainly, at least for starters coursework, you should be able to identify what courses are required as admittance criteria to a program. Um, they've identified the courses that they need to take in order to get into the program of interest. They should be able to develop a plan of how they want to, of when they want to take those courses, so that they're ready. So, if they want to say be admitted to computer science spring of 2014, and they know what classes they have to take. Um, they should be able to map out a pathway to complete those courses um, in time to be admitted. Uh, as a pre-major, might want to develop an alternate learning plan, so for their second or third choice. Um, computer science might be rather competitive, and they may want to have a few backup um, options and develop learning plans that would help them meet those or get into their second or third choice should their first choice not work out. And then obviously they would want to validate their plan, that their, <laughs> that their plan is actually what they've come up with as a way to get to their, um, to their program of interest is actually going to work for them. And, and that could take the form of um, validating against entrance requirements through a program audit. It could also take the form of validating against the catalog for when courses are offered. Um, they certainly should plan on taking a course in spring that's not typically offered in the spring. So that's the type of validation we're talking about. Um, the third area of, program, of academic planning as it relates to programs is program completion. And this obviously has a lot of overlap with program assessment that we talked about in one of the prior modules. Um, but this is really about a student who, once they've been admitted to their a program, really identifying what they need to do in order to complete that program and then set up a plan for going about doing it. So as a student has been admitted to a major, I want to identify courses. Um, and again, I have grayed out and activities because if we're not capturing those activities, then we won't be able to plan for them. Um, but at the very least, should be able to identify courses that they need to complete in order to get, graduate. And identifying courses is step one, laying them out in a, in a road map or according to a timeline so you can ensure that you're going to complete by your desired term would be the second step. So the first thing is identifying what I need to do, and then the learning plan helps identify when and how to do it. So that's the second user story. Um, as a student, I want to develop a learning plan of courses that will allow me to complete my program by a particular term. Um, Students, as we all know, uh, change their minds <laughs> sometimes. They, they might change major. They might add a major. They might add a minor. And they should be able to update their learning plan accordingly to either stay on track in terms of the time frame in which they want to complete or see how the addition and changes of majors and minors might impact their time to completion. Um, Certainly, once they've set up a plan, they've identified what they need to do and, when they, and how they want to do it, they should be able to validate that plan. Um, and then perform a formal degree audit um, from within their plan. So there's obviously a pretty tight link to advising when we talk about academic planning and learning plans. Um, so some of, the, some of the user stories around academic advising from an advisor perspective, and I'm probably a little inconsistent in these slides, whether I spell it with an O or an E. I see I have it spelled with an O here, but I think I had it spelled with an E earlier. I forget. What's our, what's our uh, is it with O, Bob? Is that what we decided from a colleague perspective? I always use O. Just, huh? I'm an O guy. <laughs> You're an O guy, Dan. I'm okay. an O guy. <laughs> You'll see a both. Oh, Debbie. Debbie, who, 
is an advisor yeah. or was an advisor. It says the UW uses the E. The E. Uh, C will Just never be different. Conflicting requirements. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Advising perspective, um, with an advisor, an advisor might want to create a sample learning plan for students to then um, copy down for their own use and modify. Um, they would want to view a learning plan that has been shared with them by a student. Um, they would might want to comment on a learning plan. And this gets into levels of access. Um, in some cases, advisors may just want to comment on, on the plan. Um, they, in some cases, uh, approval, review and approval might re be required. Uh, for various programs, students might have to have an approved learning plan on file. Um, an advisor might want to suggest additions, modifications, or deletions to a learning plan, or make those additions, modifications, deletions directly to the student's learning plan. And again, this gets into a level of access and authorization. All right, so we talked about learning plans. So these are all the different ways in which a learning plan can be used. So uh, in the program exploration phase, trying to figure out what programs might be of interest, in the program um, uh, planning and or enrollment phase, preparation and enrollment phase, students will be planning on what they need to do to get into their program of choice. The program completion phase, they want to plan on what they need to do to get out of their program of choice. Um, and in all these cases, we talk about a learning plan as a tool to help them do that. So let's talk more specifically about what this thing that we call a learning plan, how we're conceiving of it um, on KS side. So it's, it really, it, it is an object, it's a thing. <laughs> um, and it allows students to create multi-year plans based on current requirements for one or more programs. Um, it allow them to explore alternate paths to program completion. It would allow them to track their completed coursework. So once they take courses, they should um, automatically show on their learning plan as, as courses that they've taken. Um, and again, they should be able to track uh, planned coursework, hence the plan <laughs> of learning plan. Um, should be able also to track milestone, progress to milestones, so you know, different minor completion, degree completion, et cetera. Be able to save bookmark courses. So this is really more of a tool that allows them to browse the catalog and mark things of interest. Um, it should be a communication tool with their advisor. Um, it should help streamline registration. And, you know, this is a little controversial, but they might be able to share that with their social network so their friends and family can see what they're up to. So I know this still sounds a little esoteric, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, some early wireframes around learning plan to help you see um, how it was envisioned. So let's go. And I'm going to have to bump up here considerably. <laughs> 